Thank you, Stefan. Uh, I would like to thank the, all the co uh, organizers for giving me this opportunity, and it has been very professionally organized uh, despite this difficult situation. And uh, um, today, uh, I would like to give you some uh, latest development of uh, advanced electron diffraction techniques for structure determination and the phase analysis. We just heard about uh, Professor Obayagi's talk, like uh, fascinating structures and has been discovered and uh, synthesized. Actually, uh, all these beautiful structures uh, were determined act mostly by X-ray diffraction. And uh, so, you, you, as you see here, so more than one million crystal structures have been uh, deposited in the Cambridge Structure Database. And uh, all these structures and uh, uh, 5,000 stru new structures are uh, deposited every year, and the more than 90% are determined by single crystal X-ray diffraction. So it's single crystal X-ray diffraction is an important technique, and uh, so people uh, made use of it. Uh, but the major problem of this technique is that you really need very large crystals. The crystals have to be at least like a few micrometer in size if you are making use of synchrotron uh, sources. And uh, but we uh, when we make synthesis, most of the time we don't get single crystals. We get the powders, and uh, when you have powders, uh, the problem is that uh, you will see uh, have X-ray powder diffraction. There are a lot of peaks. Uh, they are very much used uh, by day on the daily basis uh, for face identification. And uh, so, and uh, sometimes it is possible to solve structures using X-ray powder diffraction, but it's very difficult because you don't get very many peaks, and the peaks are overlapping. And uh, those powders actually behave as single crystals on the electron microscopes, and you can get diffraction data. You can get high-resolution images uh, where you can see atoms, and so. Actually, what electron crystallography can give you is that it, you can, it, they can, it can be used for structure determination of for crystals too small or too complex for X-ray diffraction. So this is the goal of this talk. I believe many of you have the samples that belong to these categories. So that you get a new material, you don't know what uh, it is and what kind of phases there are, and you want to develop new materials. So this is the purpose. And uh, I have been working in this field for quite a long time and uh, mainly for, uh, to, uh, for structure determination uh, based on electron microscopy. And uh, at the beginning, we, I used a lot of images. We developed a lot of softwares for uh, in order to process and uh, study these images. And uh, today I will mainly working with, uh, talk about diffraction because this is a more high support technique that will be uh, very useful for hopefully for most of you. I will talk about the 3D electron diffraction because we want to know the 3D structures and we would like to see the, 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 uh, how the, the, three, the atomic atoms are located in different structures. And uh, what we do is it's actually similar to what we uh, determined uh, for X-ray diffraction. So you have crystal, but the crystal can be nano-sized or micro-sized. And you tilt the crystal in the microscope, and what you, you get is like a, a series of images of randomly or, or oriented. In the, uh, so you look at the images in different angles. And uh, this can be achieved in a, just a very standard microscope where you can tilt. And uh, in this case, uh, several groups have developed 3D electron diffraction techniques, like they are called it in the different name, like uh, automated diffraction tomography, or we, we call it rotation electron diffraction, and the later, so uh, also people, uh, in, uh, in, especially in the uh, biomolecular um, field, they call it micro 
electron diffraction, microED. So basically, the idea is that you collect the data by rotating the crystals and collect the uh, movie. And uh, we developed software to control the data collection and, uh, and also software for the data processing. This is uh, typically like what the, the data is, looks like. And you can collect, uh, in, uh, for example, more than 1,000 diffraction patterns uh, in less than one hour with different angles. You can combine this data into 3D and so that you can uh, basically look at the, all diffractions. You see here tremendous amount of data. And uh, using this data, it's possible to determine the unit cell and uh, the space group, and you can index the diffraction spots and uh, finally extract the intensities. All this information will be important for, for example, identifying the phase. So what kind of phases uh, you have in the sample by looking at the unit cell space group. And also if you don't, to know the structure and it is possible to use this intensity to solve the structure. And uh, we have been using this technique for a long time for studying inorganic samples, more stable, for example, zeolites and uh, other stable samples. But uh, so we had a, a collaboration with uh, Professor Mayaki to actually we solved the first single crystal cough uh, structure and are using electron diffraction. So you see this crystal is about one micrometer in size and it diffracts beautifully. Uh, so you see very nice diffraction and, and uh, but compared with extra powder diffraction, the uh, number of reflections are much more. And using this data, even it is only to 1.5 angstrom resolution, we can use uh, simulated annealing and so to make the model and finally obtain this beautiful structure. And uh, we can actually even see uh, these structures, uh, look at the low temperature and also the room temperature. We, we, we could see that actually the structure changes. Uh, through the temperature. So this is quite useful. But most of the MOPs uh, uh, and COPs are not very stable. It's very difficult to get high resolution data. And uh, in order to uh, get high resolution data, we, uh, we have to apply a new technique that is called the continuous rotation technique. So it's, the data collection is much faster, as you see here, and uh, you can the crystal just continue the tilt in the microscope and you take the movie uh, of the diffraction patterns. And in this way, you can sample all uh, reciprocal space. And uh, in order to uh, do this, we need a very good high speed detector. So we are using currently the Tantix detector. And uh, uh, using this data, uh, we, uh, we can collect actually 3D data in very, very fast. For example, this is a MOP structure that is, was collected only in 70 seconds. And in, through this data collection, actually the resolution now improved dramatically, and now we can have 0 0.8 Armstrong resolution. With this uh, data, and the, because uh, the, the data collection is almost similar to what you do uh, with X-ray diffraction, all the existing software developed for X-ray crystallography can be used. So we can use, for example, XDS, DIOS, and Crystal uh, Alice Pro to, for the data collection uh, processing, and also all the standard software used for structural determination can be used. Uh, also applied. So we don't need to develop anything else. And the, this is the data processing. You see that we were able to uh, process the data and solve the structure. This is the structure obtained uh, direct, uh, by applying the direct method using Shellex S. And you can see here all no hydrogen atoms can be identified directly. And uh, what we are applying is the kinematical refinement we are using Shell XL. So everything else except the data collection uh, is the same as what we do for single crystal x ray diffraction. So most of you who are working with that will be familiar with the technique. And I will give you just a few examples of uh, the application of 
uh, continuous rotating electron diffraction for different interesting morphs. The first one is like a bismuth uh, morph uh, synthesized uh, by my colleague uh, Eric, uh, a PhD student of uh, uh, Ken and uh, in them. and uh, so so this move is interesting so because it undergo uh, reversible unit cell changes upon solvent exchange you see here the unit cell expands uh, differently upon the different solvents and uh, when we solve the structure we find out actually this move contains like a bi uh, metal unit this inorganic building unit and the structure change is mainly based on the change of these inorganic building units. So it's very, very different than many of the other uh, flexible morphs that uh, basically give us the organic linker that changes. The, the next morph is uh, in collaboration with uh, uh, Professor uh, Norbert. and the uh, stock and uh, so this is the aluminum morph and the 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 crystal is very very small it's about 100 nanometers and uh, uh, but we can still get the electron diffraction data up to one angstrom resolution and in this case you can see the structure solution and we we, we will see that all these morphs it, it has oh, sorry and uh, so every, all the atoms can be fine and this move is also interesting because it is uh, like uh, uh, analog to the mu 53 and the CAU 10. Uh, in the mu uh, 53, the inorganic chains, they are trans all the, all the uh, throughout the chain. And the, the CAU 10, it was cis. And this is a combination of trans and cis. And this move can also uh, have. Uh, absorb water, have a water uptake, especially at low temperature. So as you see here, it's a very nice uptake even at the room temperature. And uh, so it can be recycled many, many times. Another MOP is a zirconium MOP. Uh, uh, it was together with the porphyry. And uh, this MOP is uh, formed by zirconium chains. That is quite unusual. Most of the uh, zirconium of the uh, formed by clusters, and uh, it, in co co uh, combination with the porphyrin, and uh, it forms a uh, morph with a very high density of porphyrin, and this is a, a electron diffraction data as you see here, and you see these porphyrins they are densely packed, uh, and uh, the distances between the morphins have uh, are, can be changed through this. Uh, chains. So because of this, so it, this morph has a very good uh, oxidation, uh, oxygen reduction uh, reaction uh, catalyst, and uh, so it, it can be recycled many, many times, and has a very good uh, performance uh, as a uh, electron catalyst. The, uh, another morph is uh, CaU54. It's a it's a mesoporous morph built also by zirconium uh, ions and uh, it, it is combined with a very small link uh, which is like slightly bent is the amid group here and uh, we uh, when we solve the structure and we find that this is a very beautiful like uh, honeycomb topology uh, morph and uh, it contains like two types of clusters one is the zirconium six clusters like this and uh, another one is the zirconium uh, 12 clusters like this. It's the two, typically two of the zirconium 6 clusters. And this, the morph is built uh, from a very large pores. And uh, this is one layer. And this morph is, is stacked on top of each other, this layer, and the form a 3D morph, like a 3D structure like this, and we support diameter of 42.2 nanometers. And the stacking of the pores, uh, they are actually uh, formed by hydrogen bonding, as you see here. And this, this could be directly uh, identified through the electron diffraction data, so which means we have a very good data to get, get, uh, get, uh, 
for the structure. And this move is very also chemically and thermally stable. It can, because of the hydrogen bonds, and it can be exfoliated by uh, liquid phase exfoliation. And also, we can select different sizes through uh, the centrifugation. And uh, what about this structure determination? So, so people usually ask, how robust your structure determination is? Is it just by lucky you can get the structure? Uh, uh, how how much information can you obtain? This is the example as you see here. We uh, this is uh, uh, CAU 36, also from Robert uh, Stokes Group, and uh, uh, not only we were able to uh, find the framework, we were also able to find the solvent molecules, which which is shown here, and uh, and uh, also water uh, hydrogen bonds, and uh, we collected eight data set from eight different crystals and solved the structure independently from all these eight structure data, uh, eight data sets. And we obtained eight models, as you see, the, oh, this is the overlapping of these eight models. And you, you can see that all atoms are, are overlapped almost completely, except the uh, water molecules and the solvent molecules This are uh, slightly different. And the average difference, as you see here, for the framework is 0 0.03 Armstrong, and for the organic uh, solvents, that is 0 0.08 Armstrong, and the water is 0 0.12 Armstrong. So this is the basically the accuracy we can achieve, and uh, uh, and we can reproduce use electron diffraction data for structure determination, and. Uh, we also compared the structure obtained from steroid data with X-ray diffraction data to see how accurate our structure determination can be. And we first compared with the single crystal X-ray diffraction uh, model. And this is the ZIF uh, incorporated with the uh, carbonate group uh, here. And the, the data uh, is one constant resolution. So this is actually an overlap, a superimposed uh, of uh, the model obtained by electron diffraction and the model uh, obtained by single crystal X-ray diffraction. You can hardly see any difference. The only thing you can see here is like here is slightly different with this carbon. And the average deviation is for metals is 0.06 Armstrong and for linkers is 0.07 Armstrong. So it's this kind of uh, accuracy we are able to achieve. We also compare this with the X-ray powder diffraction model. So this is a PCN 415, and it has higher resolution, 0.75 Armstrong. With this one, as you see here, you can see like the, the uh, metal positions and also the linker position, the, the accuracy is much higher comparing with the, uh, much closer to the X-ray powder diffraction model. So the, the, the accuracy really depends on the uh, resolution of the data, not very much depends on the technique you are using. I would say. Uh, through this uh, year, so we have made uh, used uh, X ray dif uh, electron diffraction to solve many structures, uh, lower structures. And these are the, some examples of structures that are showing here. And a lot of more structures that have been de uh, determined. Uh, basically, most of them are uh, achieved the atomic resolution. And uh, also, there are a number of uh, core structures that have been determined. Uh, because of the uh, data uh, if collection is fast, then we can use much lower electron dose so that we can still uh, achieve high resolution data by electron diffraction. And then now the, the structure determination by electron diffraction actually more or less start to uh, become routine work. Uh, uh, and uh, the major problems is that uh, this is still uh, in the hand of electron microscopists. So it's uh, not a technique that everybody has the access to it. And so um, my uh, goal is to try to develop this technique into a high throughput structure determination phase analysis technique. 
So we are doing several steps. One is like the serial electron diffraction, where you, you screen basically your sample on the EM grid to be able to uh, cover, uh, to, to see the, uh, how the crystals are distributed. And for each crystal, we collect each one diffraction pattern to basically the uh, uh, crystal screening. And uh, when you have many data, we are applying machine learning to select what is the good crystal, what is the uh, bad crystal, well, which means that we can collect the 3D data only from the good crystals. And uh, we combined uh, zero electron diffraction with the rotation electron diffraction, which means we can collect 3D data. And uh, during this, uh, in an automated way, during this data collection, we, we, uh, we, uh, we, we, we do everything in an automated way without any people, uh, human uh, interaction. And the, uh, recently, we are starting to develop like automated data processing and uh, automated structure solution by pipelines. The idea is that we are able to be able to collect the data uh, directly, uh, solve the structure uh, on the spot, and uh, and the, without any need any expertise from the uh, users. So this is first uh, I would show you the theory like refraction, as you see here. This is the grid that uh, we, we can look at each of these EM grids and the, for each of these ones we collect a lot of images. You see this is one of the image you show here and the, uh, the, the program directly finds the particles and uh, for each particle we collect the electron diffraction data. And so, so in this way, the data collection is extremely fast. We can, we can collect the, the more than 3,500 crystals per hour. So one crystal, one diffraction pattern. Of course, not all the diffraction patterns are good. So we are using the machine learning to select the good diffraction patterns. And we can, uh, this one can be very much used for phase analysis and the detection of impurities. As you see here is an example of this CLU 36. And you can see here, and we have, we can collect more than 1,200 electron diffraction pattern in 30 minutes. And uh, with these diffraction patterns, uh, we can find 494 of such diffraction patterns that can be indexed uh, uh, as CAU36, which means this is a morph. And, uh, many, uh, and the six of them actually it, it looks very differently and they are actually impurities and also many of them are amorphous. So, uh, and uh, so if we know that this uh, a different phase, we can go there to collect the uh, theory the data, 3D data. And then, for example, in this case, we collect the data. It's data collection is very fast at 1.5 minutes. It's you collect 3D data. And from the data, you can solve the structure. Of course, using the EDS, you can also analyze the structure, uh, the composition. So in this case, this just this is the, the, the starting material we obtained from uh, for the synthesis. And so this is powerful to get this uh, structure uh, uh, determination phase analysis using zero electron diffraction. But then we wanted to combine the zero electron diffraction and the CRED. And this is an example, as you see here, now the data collection is done in an automated way. So basically the, uh, the program finds the crystal and uh, uh, decide if we want to collect the data and then tilt the crystal and collect the data. As you see here, when we tilt the crystal, the problem is that the crystal moves out of the uh, aperture so that we have to have this crystal tracking uh, to be able to make sure that the crystal is uh, on the uh, in the crisp, uh, in, in the beam, and after that, we, we uh, the program we directly online doing the data conversion to and also data processing. In this case, we are using the software dials to for the data processing. So this is the data processing and uh, indexing uh, that will be carried out uh, just directly after our data collection, so that we are we are getting the answer directly on the microscope. When we have so many data and uh, we, uh, the, uh, we can make 
uh, the clustering to see that how many different faces we're able to uh, we have in the uh, based on our election diffraction data and we will see here that uh, this is a zeolite example from the series the data uh, we were able to get the unit cell parameters and by comparing the unit cell parameters as you see here and we can get different clusters and the, the, this one actually this is a modern light uh, cluster here and this is the zsm5 another zeolite uh, here so ma the majority is uh, zsm5 and uh, so when after this, uh, so we know that in this case, at least we have two different phases, and uh, the dominating one is ZSM5. But uh, we can also check their intensities to see how their, inten their intensity agree. And so this is a second level of clustering is based on intensities. So in this case, so we have uh, typically seven different uh, data sets from modernite, and actually these uh, have have similar intensities uh, uh, and then for the ZSM5 and as you see here the, this has a one cluster this will have a different cluster so by look at this one we can actually uh, uh, not only look uh, see the difference in the unit cell but also the intensity difference this probably indicates some intrinsic structure changes and uh, so using this information we can we have, should be able to see the inhomogeneity of your sample and uh, if we, uh, after that we can merge this data well with uh, the in, uh, data that belongs to the same cluster for the structure make a structure determination so we can solve the structure uh, using this uh, uh, zero red data so as these are the examples of both morphs and zero reds can be solved after that uh, we uh, now the data collection is so fast can, can we make directly automated structure solution at the data processing. So we are, we are, uh, my student developed its online structure determination uh, pipeline, as you see here. Now, uh, first, we, uh, we are, like, through your video, we prepared online structure determination, as you hear. So first, we activate this server so that to, uh, to f uh, activate the system, we said that we, can, we wanted to have the online structure determination. So this is uh, uh, all this. Uh, and uh, of course, you have to input the element you, uh, if you know and the composition. And if you don't know the exact composition, you can just put one, one, one. It's, it's still okay, Shalix can handle it. After that, we prepare the uh, data collection so that we start the data collection. Uh, and as you see here, the data will, will oh, sorry, uh, the data will be, will be collected as you see here. Uh, and uh, after that, uh, so when, when the data is collected uh, and uh, it will be saved directly to uh, to the, the format that can be direct, uh, directly pr uh, processed in this case we use xds uh, and uh, and this data collection took about uh, uh, four minutes and uh, from there and you can uh, we were able to so this is 100 about 100 degrees and the tilt step exposure time in total 434 frames has been collected after this and the, the another uh, program uh, that will be uh, called it's got we are using xds so now it's, you see the peak search is already carried out and then the, you find the peak funding and now peak integration and uh, so this all this will be done just online directly uh, after the data has been collected and finally you get the unit cell parameters in the space group and the program will save the hkl file and the input file uh, ready for shellx x uh, lt and the shellx will the struggle solution will be carried out immediately and uh, after the, this is the final structure solution uh, obtained uh, directly from shellx t so all this, as you see here, uh, uh, sorry. So uh, and uh, all, all this will not really. Uh, ha we, we don't have any human interactions. So these are the data we obtain, and uh, the completeness and the, all these reflections. So all this data processing and the structure determination 
it's fully automated and finished in three minutes online. And so most of the atoms and the solvent molecules could be located. Uh, of course, uh, like uh, uh, there are problems like some the atom atomic assignment usually it is not correct. And uh, but this would be very easy to uh, to correct. And now uh, I uh, have shown you that uh, the, the development of electron diffraction techniques. So I showed you three things. Uh, one is the 3D electron diffraction or rotation electron diffraction. And in the beginning, we have stepwise uh, data collection. Data collection takes 60 minutes. And then for the continuous uh, rotation electron diffraction, data collection is about three, uh, five, 0 0.5 and to 5 minutes, typically. And uh, when we uh, can use automated data collection, it's called the zero rent. And after this one, basically, we can screen the sample and uh, in the automated way, each data collection uh, probably takes up one minute to achieve. And the uh, serial electron diffraction is a technique that can screen uh, thousands of the uh, particles through the grid and being able to make a phase analysis based on this electron diffraction data. And also we can combine this serial electron diffraction data into 3D and to, for the structure determination also. And uh, as you see, my goal is to make everything in a, a simple and the auto automated way that even those of you who are not experts in crystallogra uh, as a crystallographer and you are making uh, some uh, synthesis samples can be able to use this technique to uh, for your uh, studies and the, the automated data processing and structured solution pipeline probably will give you uh, uh, such a, a uh, solution and uh, and uh, what I really hope, my vision is that uh, the, all this advanced electron diffraction technique can provide new opportunities for you uh, to discover new open framework materials, including MOPs and CORPS, and also exploring new applications. So there are a lot of uh, opportunities that will be open if you are able to have access for this technique. And uh, yeah, finally, I would like to thank uh, all my uh, group members. So now, as you see that we are all uh, working mostly at home, so we have a group meeting at home. So that's uh, like, this is my group. And uh, the people who have been uh, developed techniques that I have already shown you. And uh, I would like to also just thank my former members through the years we started to develop this technique uh, for more than a decade ago and uh, uh, Sven Hormola, Daliang, and the Wei Wan, all, all these people have been involved in the uh, master development. And of course, uh, my uh, colleagues who are giving me uh, challenging samples uh, uh, from uh, Professor Mayagi's uh, uh, talk, I think that it's even more challenging uh, questions uh, are coming up. And so it's our uh, interest to being able to tackle these challenges to further develop them, uh, the uh, techniques. And also like David and the Kai, they, they are uh, like the developing the software, so we are working together to implement the electron diffraction into the software dedicated to X-ray diffraction. And also our funding agencies to, to support the, the work. And uh, uh, finally, so, uh, this, uh, yeah, uh, the software we developed, they are free, so you are welcome to, to download and to use it. I really hope that uh, everybody can have the opportunity to use these techniques for your questions and problems. Finally, I thank everybody for your attention. <laughs>